So welcome friends today in this series we will be talking about ICUs uh, which is one of the most critical element in any hospital okay and um, many times we uh, we cut corners in creating ICU and uh, that may be because of budget or some kind of vision problem that you do not able to see how ICU can actually enable growth in the hospital. So that is one part and other, other things about the technologies of ICU how to design infrastructure, everything we will discuss in this series. So this series is going to be dedicated to ICU and very, very important and critical series. So Dr. Pranav Sharma, welcome. And uh, today we will be talking about ICU. So what is your take on ICU? I believe that uh, if you think that operation theater is the heart of the body, is the heart of the hospital, then ICU is the brain. Mm -hmm. They work in tandem and both are you know, irreplaceable. And ICU has its own technicalities also. Mm -hmm. So you should always take those things in my mind when you are making a new ICU or you are upgrading a new ICU. Absolutely. We'll be detailing about the how to, what all things you should remember and what you should not miss when you are planning an ICU. Fantastic. So in this uh, first video of this series, we will be talking about uh, ICU planning. Okay. So what are the different uh, levels of ICU? Let me just share the mind map with you guys. So we will discussing about two things. One is levels of ICU and another is high dependency unit, which is called SDU. And levels of ICU means what are the different kind of hospitals? What number of beds decide the levels? So level one, level two, level three, and what are the guidelines for planning ICU beds? So there are critical guidelines to be followed. And what is SDU? Where SDU is required or not? So we will cover all this thing in much detail. Okay. So before I we go into the details of this video, I just from a management point of view and from actually the business point of view. So I, I, I will be always talking about the business or in terms of like how it impacts the, the, the revenue stream of the hospital as well as the patient outcome. That again is a critical element for a, for a hospital. So what do you take on, on that? ICU is actually a place where you can really save the patients and do miracles. If it is done properly, the clinical services this is the most critical part and this is where the most sickest patient live. Mm. So it is one, it is a face of the hospital. Mm. And two, it is the most revenue generating area for the hospital. Absolutely. So if you take it in perspective, you can save a lot of patients and you can also earn money. So you can service while you earn yeah. and uh, while you create a lot of goodwill as well. So yes. ICU become the center of growth for an hospital. So if you are any, any size of hospital, we will discuss different size and how you can actually accommodate different kind of ICUs. I think it becomes very imperative that you, ICU should be in your hospital. And if you have not built it or you have built it not functional, then this series will give you a glimpse of hope. Okay. And um, other than this part, I just wanted to take your focus on this part that from a from larger perspective, from a larger, if you have a larger vision, then not every hospital will have an ICU. And if you have an ICU in within the some some kilometers, you become the center of of attraction. So all the patients, all the of, of other hospitals also start coming into the even the hospitals start referring their their patient to your hospital. Suddenly you become the center of attraction and inflows increases. So from that perspective also you have to you have to take care see that key, whether it is possible for me or or financially viable for for us to go to the ICU and there are a lot of models also but also there are a lot of models not you don't have to invest a lot of money there are different outsourcing model as well which is upcoming and there are people who can run it for you it can be built for you you can have a build and uh, run the model or maybe they can hold they can manage the whole ICU for you build operate transfer model yeah bot model so Correct. you can have multiple options to choose but definitely your hospital if you want to grow fast and if you have want to make an impact then you should have an ICU and we have seen and within our community as well, they are the people who have built the ICU, they have kind of fast tracked their growth. And suddenly the, the lot of media attention was also there and uh, one or two success story or multiple success stories that come into the media also that gives an impact. Yeah. So, so in this, uh, in this series, the first video, let's focus on uh, ICU planning and go back to the uh, mind map and understand uh, the different levels and SDU and other stuff which we want to discuss. So let's take the notes because it is a little technical. Yes. And uh, let's let's hope that you get an ICU in your hospital soon. 
yeah please take notes and if you have any comments any question you can ask below the video also and uh, you can watch it multiple times because uh, it is the video uh, the content is little deep and you should able to understand because uh, it's a time consuming as well as the money uh, part is also involved so you should be you should plan in a proper way uh, without actually putting a lot of stress on yourself okay so yes. let's go to the mind map there are various level of hospitals as far as the icu beds are concerned and the hospitals are level 1 level 2 and level 3 right so in level 1 this is up to 50 beds so from 1 to 50 bed okay in these uh, up to 50 beds the icu should be at least 6 to 8 beds mm -hmm. and uh, you should be able to perform the cpr and you should be able to do the intubation of the patient okay and uh, even non invasive ventilation and defibrillation okay so these are the basic things you should have a multi para monitor mm -hmm. with saturation with heart rate with ecg and ibp facility and temperature facility should have access to ultrasound access to x ray and basic clinical lab to ye jab planning kar rahe ho to usi samay dhyan rakhna padega because lab lab reports are very important hmm like blood sugar electrolyte lft rft hmm and even abg facility okay then you have at least ready recon or one one book and one general of critical care medicine so that you are updated with what is happening in the field of icu hmm and general infection control practices of course it is required which is which should be uh, you should train the patients and train the uh, patient care staffs to be taking care of the infection control because this is one of the important cause of patient becoming more sick or morbid yes yes and and these uh, things will also take care in nbh also yeah yeah they are so, required in nbh also correct so we may, I, like most of the doctors will be going for nbh yeah. and uh, these things will be asked in nbh as well yeah. so it is better uh, if if person goes from the starting in the planning phase uh they plan for an icu yeah. coming on to 50 to 100 beds like uh, this is uh, somehow uh, some what a bigger hospital yeah. where you can have an icu of 8 to 12 beds mm. and again the icu in charge or doctor or hod should be the intensivist who is qualified and trained and is certified in critical care there are a lot of courses which are have which are there in the certification of mm. critical care and you must get them trained yeah uh, then the facility of multi system organ transport should be there central nursing station or central monitoring facility because a 10 bedded icu cannot be managed by without uh, uh, central monitoring facility mm -hmm. because they have to give 24 by 7 uh, care so central care of nursing is important okay and non invasive and invasive ventilation both are important mm -hmm. and it should be up to two third of the bed strength like 10 beds are there so approximately six beds should have a icu 6 to 7 so bed they have to have ventilation facility mm -hmm. access to rrt renal replacement transcutaneous spacing because many patients go in heart block mm. the nursing and duty doctor are also should be trained in certified in critical care preferably at least 50% should be trained so that they can train the other 50% young staff because the attrition of staff is also there mm. and the abg facility should be there and uh, besides x ray and ultrasound you have to have ct and mri access i mean they should be close by so you should plan an icu in such a way that either you have a ct mri in house or it should be nearby nearby and then access to the super specialty of medicine and surgery should be available okay and when we are going like large hospital more than 150 beds then then all the facilities above mentioned that are required mm. so all the extreme care facilities like uh, you must have a uh, icu uh, preferably 8 to 12 beds and 12 is a mark 12 is a number because more than 12 12 bed of icu it is difficult to manage by one person mm. and one person is going to take care of 8 to 12 beds then it is the system and protocols are followed well mm. so you should be in the segments of 12 beds and if you have more icu beds then you should make a new unit new unit then uh, they should it should be a closed unit so that uh, entry is restricted mm. like you should uh, don the clean clothes and then you come in the icu usually the relatives are not allowed mm. and they were, they should have a provision of advanced cardiac respiratory monitoring both invasive monitoring and non invasive monitoring and uh, intra hospital and intra hospital transport facility should be available multi care and multi system care referrals and uh, they should be available around the clock so super specialty should be on your board so that they can come in eventualities of any problems in different systems of different body parts okay ultrasound and echo should be there in the icu it's inside the icu 425 by 7 mm. and blood bank and pharmacy and canteen should be available 24 by 7 so this facility should be there in your hospital itself okay in 150 beds uh, in 150 beds of uh, Uh, hospital a ct and mri facility is recommended to be in house in house yeah obviously and a basic rrt should be there crrt should be there plasma exchange and the nurse to patient ratio should be at least 1 to 1 mm. 
should not compromise on this. You can take a less experienced nurse, but she should be handling the patient on his own. Mm -hmm. So that a little low risk patient is managed by a junior sister nurse and senior uh, sister should take care of the more critical patients. Mm -hmm. One is to two when the patient is on non noisy ventilation. So this should be the ICU staff should be spaced like that. They should be equipped for the long term ICU care and acute and palliative care. Coming on to the 3B where you have extracorporeal therapy. These are uh, along with the 3A all the extreme care services should have ECMO, ECCO and LV assist device. So these are the higher versions of life support system but they should be available in and facility should be there and we are planning a ICU of the hospital of about 150 beds. Correct. This is a nice very nice structure knowledge and even some of the things like number of ICU beds requirement. See mostly in normal hospitals we have up to 5% should be the hospital beds which should be ICU hmm. but in specialties like cardiac hospital or a cardiothoracic surgery hospital unit hmm. or a critical care nephro unit hmm. sometimes in even neurological surgery unit up to 20 to 25% should be the hospital beds should be the hmm. ICU beds. It is recommended that less than 5% should never be there right? because that will be inadequate because uh, like for example you have 10 bedded ICU hmm. and at least 10 bedded ward then at least 2 to 3 patients should be ICU, two, ICU. ICU. I, two, 2 to 3 beds should be ICU. So. ICU beds, yeah. Okay, okay. And 8 to 12 is the ideal recommendation. So, 12, more than 12 beds, you should have a new plan. Different quality. unit. Okay, okay. Then, HDU is a high dependency unit and it is required for the ultimate planning of the ICU. Mm. Because ICU is the highest standard region in the hospital. And if you keep a lot of ICU beds, then the hospital is going to be very, very high, uh, rev, uh, high cost of operations and mm. a lot of money will be spent. Mm. So HDU should be optimally utilized because as soon as the patient becomes a little mm. better, then mm. it can be shifted to HDU so, yeah. and HDU shifting is uh, followed by the ward shifting. Mm. In case the patient deteriorates in HDU, he can be shifted back to ICU. Okay. The shifting from ICU to HDU should be swift. Swift. And it is desirable in level 2 but is mandatory in level 3. I mean okay. it should be there once you have a proper ICU of 8 to 12 beds, at least less than 50, about 50% of the ICU beds should be HDU beds. Okay. So it is the area which is uh, intermediate between ICU and other floors. Mm -hmm. Near the ICU or within the ICU complex itself. Okay. Nursing supportive staff. Uh, actually what happens is that nursing staff and all supportive staff is initially trained in the HDU. So they are the basic type of emergencies they are able to manage and then only they are exposed to ICU okay. proper. Okay. So that their training is also properly done. Okay. Step 5. Once the patient is in the recovery phase then the patient who does not require proper uh, continuous monitoring or invasive monitoring mm. he can be shifted to the HDU. HDU. That is 50 percent of the ICU beds and uh, nursing ratio or this should be at least it's 1 to 2 or 1 is to 3. Okay. It can also use as a palliative unit or end of care. Mm. Very sick or very terminally ill patients are there and you feel that this bed if you, I keep in the ICU then the ICU bed is wasted. Wasted, yeah. Then you can keep him in the HDU unit. HDU. And uh, so that is uh, a good bench strength should be there. It's like a, in a match you have a good bench strength. Yeah. <laughs> it is like ICU ha has to have a very good HDU is to back so that sometimes even critical patients can be kept in the HDU, HDU. if you don't have beds in ICU. Mm -hmm. Right, right. So it's kind of in between, something in between a general ward and ICU. And ICU, yeah. Okay. So hope you have learned a uh, very, very critical concepts uh, as far as ICU is concerned and uh, you like the video. If you are watching uh, this on Facebook, please uh, tag uh, your friend, uh, some colleague, senior, junior who actually in need of ICU and who want uh, the, this, this knowledgeable video. If you are watching it on uh, YouTube, you can uh, please like the video, subscribe and press the bell uh, icon. And also you can also comment and ask question below the video and we will answer each and every question. And you should comment and uh, top three take takeaways which you had in the ICU. And, um, and if you are watching on, on on LinkedIn or any other platform, you can like, comment, and share with the people. It is very very deep uh, understanding of ICU. Uh, not uh, re it is not like available every here and there. It takes a uh, lot of effort to build this kind of uh, knowledgeable session. So please share, and um, you will also earn some karma points. Okay. So in the in this series. Uh, of ICO, we will be talking in the next video. We will be talking about uh, uh, some uh, nine critical points of ICO infrastructures. Okay, very very important session on ICO in the next video. So in this series, let's go to the next video and understand the ICO infrastructure and the nine critical points. 
Okay. So bye bye. Take care and please share, comment, and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Bye bye. We'll be sharing similar kind of stuff in our uh, coming videos also. If you want to learn more about that, then you can click over the link below. Then attend the free master class for you. We will be having similar information and more information like this. Yeah, and just wanted to add to it that um, uh, if you really want to understand how we are helping uh, more than five thousand doctors in our community, especially about the healthcare entrepreneurship, uh, you can register for the upcoming workshop. The link is given below uh, below this video. Okay, go and see what are the offerings and how we are able to help. Register for it. Come to the master class, and we will we will tell you how we can help you in achieving your dream. Okay, hope so to hope to see you in the master class. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Take care.